Hello and welcome to the Build With Bear Workshop. My name is Pat Bear. I'm here to build the model kit and to hang out with all of you. And to get things started, I'm throwing the Bear Cave, the Lego, the Scythe, the Tier 2 Blue Emote in chat. If you are currently a subscriber, you can reply with those emotes. If you are not yet a subscriber, you can say hi or use other people's emotes. Or if you feel like being a lurker and you don't want to say anything, you can just hang out and lurk. And that's okay as well. It is Saturday. May the 4th be with you. Did I plan ahead and have ready a Star Wars model kit or Lego set to build tonight? No. Aristophan is here. Hello, Aristophan, throwing that tier two blue emote. Appreciate you. Lashbrook is here. Hello, Lashbrook. I did not plan ahead. I plan ahead usually for Christmas. I try to plan around like Valentine's Day. Stuff that like, I'm running out of Lego sets for Halloween. Last year, you may remember we did a knockoff Lego set for Halloween because I was like, oh um because i've run out of brickheads lego sets that fit um so yeah i'm, I'm kind of like I'm, I'm usually pretty good about it may the 4th i don't i don't think about it as a star wars holiday in the same way i don't think about march 13th uh as uh uh as mar or march 10th i should say 13th i certainly don't think about march 13th i don't think about march 10th mar 10 as mario day these just don't come to my brain um, it'd be nice if they did, if I thought about it more, but I don't think about it more. I think about it less or not at all. So I don't have anything for you We're working on the, uh, our -gya -gya, And I, I do realize now, I recognize now that I didn't take out, um, the metal guru mon, which we worked on on Thursday. I did not, uh, get rid of that. Uh, so now I am updating, uh, the, uh, title, um, I won't update the go to live load uh, thing because I already went live. I've updated the title. So it says Gunpla. Oop, that doesn't even say Gunpla. That says Gunpala. Uh, Gunpla R Gia Gia. I have now corrected my mistake twice. Two mistakes. Uh, we are currently sitting at 30 subscribers right now. The goal is to get to 50 i shot up about it to 50 if you want to become a subscriber hell yeah if you want to gift a sub to somebody in the community hell double yeah if you just want to hang out and not do any of that fuck yeah go right ahead it's a it's a fun day uh for for shenanigans um there was a wrestling show a wwe premium live event as they say that took place in france so it aired in the afternoon here uh, on the East Coast of the United States, and that's great for me. Um, that's just wild and good. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised to get that. Uh, sorry, I'm looking up one quick thing right now. Um, yes, okay. So I had to look up a name, and I've looked up that name. Um, yeah, so hey, what's up? Hi. Welcome to Bill Bear Workshop. Um, I'm hoping more people decide to join us tonight. You know, obviously they have they have other they have other plans. They got other things going on. Like I can't make them, but if people want to come in and hang out on the old Bill with Bear, they're more than welcome to. Working on the Argya Gya. We finished the upper body of the kit, uh, the chest, the head, and the arms. Uh, we are going to be working on the legs next. We'll do the legs. We're not doing the feet. We're doing the legs and then the feet, which is a little unusual, but sure. Uh, usually, for some reason, you go from arms, jump down to feet, but not in this case. Uh, and then we have to do the uh, the waist and the connectors that we can attach to the top part of the kit, which we will do. And then the shoulders, uh, the shield weapon, uh, which, uh, or sure, sorry, the shields, which are also the shoulder weapons. And we got to build out the shoulders and all that. And then the, uh, the beam saber and all of those things. And then the shoulder, the pauldrons come off and you can put beams on them so we've got some uh stuff to put on there also yes the two beam sabers do connect together and yes if you really wanted to make a stink about it on today may the 4th we will have a kit that eventually will have a beam saber and we could make a beam saber tonight just so we can say well we got a beam saber it's you know it's like a lightsaber it's clearly inspired by a lightsaber so we could say that if we wanted to, but let's just, let's just be reasonable and say, nah, we're good. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, let's go to the main feed. Yeah, let's go over here. So here is the Argya Gya. You can see we got the head, we got the chest, the arms done here. Um, I did something to this kit. Uh, this polycap, uh, the neck polycap, kept coming out. So I have made an, a, a slight alteration in that I stuck a bunch of liquid cement in there. So now the uh, this polycap won't come out. So hopefully uh, the pressure of the head will, won't make it mo moving around, won't cause the neck thing to pop out because uh, that was becoming a, a, a problem. And that will no longer be a problem. Some of these legs, we can do uh, the start part piece of the leg, we can do at the same time. And then the rest will be one leg, then the other leg, which is fine and good. So we'll get into that. Uh, so let's get going on uh, this section of leg that we can do, as I said, at the same time, which makes it convenient. Um, I do not have a Twitter update right now. Uh, block is going to change how block works, but we don't we don't have a timetable on when that's going to be or if it is going to be that. Uh, but here is a the very rare blue sky update, which has uh, something to do with Twitter. So it's it, it felt worth bringing it up in our long-standing Twitter updates. Instead, we're going to take a little detour and we're going to do a uh, blue sky update. Um, so uh, on uh, Twitter, the verified account user at Jack, one of the founders of Twitter, who was also uh, on the board of blue sky, was talking about open sats, which I'm not going to get into Basically, it's a starter startup thing, uh, and Jack has put some money towards it, and he was talking about that, and then someone um, uh, basically added him and said, hey, are you still on the Blue Sky board? To which Jack said, no. And that was as of today. Um, the bad Jack is no longer at, uh, at Blue Sky, and that's great. Uh, because it's not like he wasn't a fucking problem. <laughs> so good for Blue Sky, who again, I don't necessarily have any dog in the race of who's going to win the social media war, uh, because it does very much seem like there is no winner in that war, and it's just a bunch of other social media are going to exist, and they will screen cap Twitter things. Uh, I say this as, the announcement about not the announcement, the people talking about this were talking about it because he mentioned it on Twitter and they screen capped it and posted it on Blue Sky. So that's how like I am aware of what's happening with that. So in my my grand thoughts on this are nobody nobody's gonna win this. It's just gonna be different. There will not be a public square uh, in the future. It is just going to be a bunch of social media sites, and either you pick one, and that's the one you use. Or you use all of them and you try to use them for different things. Uh, or if you blow the fuck up on one, then maybe you, you know, don't do the other ones. As, as many of you are aware, I am on still on Twitter. I am on Blue Sky. I am on. Um, uh, God, what else am I on? Uh, I'm on Mastodon. I'm on Co-host, although that's really more of more of trying to get Tumblr vibes than anything else. Um, I'm not on threads. I have a Facebook account. I have an Instagram account. I could post on threads. I don't want to post on threads. Oh, I also have a TikTok and you know, but whatever. I don't post promos on TikTok. I post videos that no one watches. It's fine. It's okay. Uh, I'm not, I'm not hitting the algorithm correctly to really post on there. All right. So we've got our connectors here. These seem to be in order and correct. We'll find out later if I fuck this up. I believe this is a knee piece. Yeah, this is a knee piece here. So I'll know later. Uh, I'll know if I fucked up this knee piece and I can fix it with the other one. But I don't think I did. I think I did okay. We'll find out though. Um, yeah, so that's a minor update there. Um, if there's any other small news before we get into talking wrestling. Um... Let's see. Uh, yeah, let's talk about it. Uh, Backlash France uh, happened today. It, the first match kicked off at 1 p.m. Eastern time, 
which uh which is great unless you're on, i guess on the west coast of the united states it would be frustrating or, or west coast of north america i should say it'd be frustrating because you would it'd be very early for you but for me it was like yeah i had the pre-show on at noon i finished eating lunch and had some stuff ready to go and i was like okay i guess i'll uh watch wrestling for the afternoon that's pretty good uh uh AEW does not have collision tonight because of uh, basketball. So I was like, okay, well, if there's not going to be that wrestling on to watch late tonight, like, I don't mind watching a premium live event, which is what they call their pay-per-views because they're not on pay-per-view. Um, I was like, yeah, I'll watch that. It's a B tier show backlash in the old days. Uh, this show would be a lot of WrestleMania rematches. You would just get, you know, I, or variations like, oh, it was a three-way fight at WrestleMania, but now it's a two-way fight or it's a, or vice versa. This was just like a stopgap show. None of these were longstanding feuds. A couple of them were things that were happening in the background that have been kind of building, uh, like Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill versus the Kabuki Warriors. Well, they were part of a six-woman match, and now they're in, a, you know, a tag team match. Like, that makes sense. That's like direct fallout of what's happened. Uh, kind of makes some sense. Um, D25 is needed. Uh, so like I said, yeah. So there were some stuff that was like kind of some payoffs and other stuff that was just like, eh, kind of rushed. Like, hey, we're going to have a tournament to decide who your number one contender is. And it's this person. You've got two weeks to cut promos and then we'll have, you'll have a match. And that's about it. And it's like, okay. Or hey, you've been fighting for like a couple weeks and like building up this feud and now you're going to have a pay-per-view match and maybe you'll have another one eventually, but right now this is it. So enjoy that match because that's what you got. It's like, okay. Um, so yeah, the storylines weren't necessarily super deep, but that's kind of like this. That's kind of like the vibes of this show. Um, we opened with a tag team match that was originally just a regular tag team match and got changed, which was great because it made it way fucking cooler. Uh, it was the bloodline in this case, represented by Solo Sokoa and Tama Tonga in Tama Tonga's first WWE match. Um, of course, wrestler New Japan and, uh, the independent scene. Um, I should say Tama Tonga, the son of Haku, and you're saying to yourself, well, Pat, the son of Haku, or like Haku is not part of the Samoan dynasty. He's not part of the Anawai family. How'd that work out? Well, Haku is a is considered family. Many people in of 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 Solo Sokoa's generation and, and a bit of an older generation um, consider him to be like an uncle. So he is he is cool. He is you know, he, he is like related to all of the shenanigans and like totally accepted. So his sons being part of it, like, yes, that, that seems to be universally. That is not a WWE invention. That is something that is people are like, fuck. Yeah, that's, that's my guy. So apparently it's cool. Anyway, they took on Randy Orton and Kevin Owens who, who have like fought against each other and fought, uh, against common enemies a bunch they seem to get along pretty well i keep waiting for one of them to uh deceive the other turn their back on the other because that is what both of them are really known for doing so i am expecting it to come any day now anyway they were supposed to have a regular match but before the match started they just started brawling and then like referee was like hey stop brawling we haven't started the match yet and they were like no and then uh, officials came in and they were like, hey, stop doing that. And those officials looked awfully like uh, professional wrestlers from the local French area. Um, uh, yeah, and they're getting pushed around. And then, uh, who was it? Was it Adam Pierce? No, it was because uh, it would be SmackDown. Um, Nick Aldis came out and was like, hey, you want to brawl around? You want to kit people? You want to, you know, whatever? Fine. You can brawl around. I'm making this a street fight. No disqualifications, no count outs. It's a, it's a goddamn street fight. And everyone was like, 
Hell yeah. Street Fight sounds great to me. Everybody was on board for it. So it became a Street Fight. Okay, so this doesn't seem... This goes like this, and it goes like that. And this comes together like that. Okay, yes. So if that goes like... Okay, I'm doing this correctly. Sorry, my apologies. So then they had a Street Fight, and it was really fun. It was good. Um... I am not the biggest fan of Tama Tonga, of, of uh, Gorillas of Destiny. Um, uh, he, he is not my favorite wrestler. I think he is fine, but he is not like an as outstanding pro wrestler. Uh, in this, it worked out great because he's just muscle. He took a bunch of fucking bumps, some gnarly shit. It was very cool. A weird thing happened in this match where... Uh, they the two groups fought a, apart from each other, and so they were fo- the cameras were like split and following each other. And then at one point, um, Randy Orton like hit Tamatanga and then like lost him. He like lost place of where Tamatanga was. So the cameras were like, let's not just focus on just Randy standing there. So both cameras in a split screen. So it was like one camera like here and one shot there, like down the middle. Um, they were both two different people, two different cameras looking at. Uh, Solo Sokoa and Kevin Owens fighting. And it was really weird. And it lasted a really long time because they were just waiting for Randy to like find the, anyone so they could do it. Uh, uh, it was very strange. Anyway, they brawled for uh, quite a bit. They fought back and forth. Uh, there were some big moves. Randy did an RKO to Solo Sokoa on a table that did not cause the table to break, which was surprising. Uh, that was odd to see. Um Lots of fighting, and then uh, a pinfall certainly was going to end it. It looked like our heroes were going to win, the good guys were going to win, and then the unthinkable happened. The referee got pulled out of the ring, so he could not complete the three count. Or if you looked at fan footage, um, pulled him, scooted himself out of the ring because the person that was supposed to pull him out of the ring didn't do a good job of it. (laughs) And that person revealed himself to be, by just being there, it was Tongaloa. Tongaloa, who is the uh, brother of Tama Tonga. Uh, he is the adopted brother of Tama Tonga. Um, and also um, uh, Hikaleo. Or, yes. Uh, or is this, Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, Hikaleo and Tom. Hikaleo, Tama and Tonga are all brothers. Um, Tonga Loa from New Japan, as of like a couple days ago from New Japan. Like no one knew his time would with would that was up. No one had I any idea uh, that the Gorilla's Death Destiny um, were just not there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's not in New Japan anymore. We don't know. Uh, Tonga, you may know from his time in New Japan, as I said. You also may know uh, Tonga Loa as his alternate name when he wrestled in the WWE as Camacho. He was a uh, like a a, a California uh, LA. He was definitely going for a Latin American, Mexican LA gangbanger style, uh, even though he is Hawaiian. Um, uh, but yeah, he was definitely going for some kind of nonsense thing with that, but, uh, he, he rode a bicycle to the ring that was like a decked out low rider bicycle. Um, it was, it was whatever. And then he was in NXT for a while and then he, he was at NXT and then he was, uh, Tongaloa in New Japan for a whole lot of time. And now he's in the WWE. So now the current bloodline is run by Solo Sokoa uh, with help from two of Haku's sons, which is weird. Uh, Do we think Hikaleo will also join? Probably. Uh, So I I was wrong because I said, well, this is Tomatonga's first match in the WWE. Uh, Tamatanga, they they want to make the showcase on him being a an enforcer, making the thing happen. They're not going to bring in 
uh, another new member of the bloodline with this, with, like they got to keep it to two people for a little while. They're not going to bring somebody else in because that complicates things. They did bring someone else in. Now, I did say they weren't going to bring in Jacob Fatu, who is part of the Anawai family. Uh, he's worked for MLW for many years. Uh, he is reportedly signed by the WWE. Um, so, uh, and is hasn't been used yet uh because it was like okay well like they'll, they'll bring him in but they're gonna do it right away and they didn't do it right away they instead brought in the guy nobody knew was available uh so that's that's wild and cool uh and then there's the thought of like well the usos could get back together because they beat up jimmy uso so they could like get jimmy uso back in and maybe uh, Jacob Fatu shows up and helps out the Uso brothers. And then it's like internal bloodline. Like who's the real bloodline and who's the fake bloodline? I don't know if they're going to do that, but they could do that is what I'm saying. What I'm saying is they could do that and it would be pretty cool. Um, I'm going to jump ahead. They're telling me right next to make the legs or to make the feet, but I'm going to uh, do the rest of this leg and then I'm going to panel line this leg. Uh, and then I'll work on the feet. It's a very strange thing. I don't know why I didn't start with the feet. I don't know why I did most of this leg. And then they want me to do the two feet and then do the rest of the leg. That seems weird. So we're just going to ignore that and work on the next part. Uh, I need a one and one will be over here. Yeah. One's over here. Uh, so that was the first match. That was kind of cool. It was a good brawl. Um, all these matches were pretty long for WWE pay-per-view standards. That was like a 20 minute match. The shortest match on the card was 13 minutes and it was the next match. Uh, Bailey defeated Naomi and Tiffany Stratton to retain her WWE women's championship, uh, in a fucking great match. This is a great match. Um, it was just hard hitting, uh, started off strong. There was a little bit of a weird delay because they were trying to do a lot of like, I do a thing to you and then you do, and then someone else does the thing. You do it to somebody else. And that person does it to somebody else. Like they were trying to do lots of triplet moves, which is cool, but everyone needs to be on the same page and on board and fast for that to work out. Uh, we are now applying some more of our stickers here. Uh, stickers five. We don't have a lot of stickers left because most of the stickers went on uh, the chest or the head. So we still have a few stickers left here to put on uh, the leg. So we'll get that sticker on and then we'll move on to the next part. Uh, but yeah, this match was fast paced. Uh, Tiffany Stratton, up and comer, probably maybe a little early for her to be in a main event, not a main event, but a title match. Maybe I think she did a good job. Hey, Lord Crashing and welcome. I think she still did a fine job, but it might've been a little early for her to get in there. Uh, Naomi takes the pin and does not get mad when she loses. She kind of gives Bailey a hug. So that might be the end of their little, her trying to get the belt, but also, uh, they're still friends and that's nice because Bailey doesn't really have friends in, th in the division because she was a heel for so long and because the SmackDown ladies have long memories, which is good. I like that in wrestling. That's nice. So they're like, nah, you were, you were, you started the group that I hate. So yeah, just because they, it's like, it's not like she had like a change of heart. They kicked her out. So she's a face because her evil friends didn't want her to be part of their evil group anymore. So it's like, I totally understand why, like, Bianca is just like, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm not going to help you out. Um, Damian Priest retained the World Heavyweight Championship, defeating Jey Uso in a 15-minute uh, match that was fucking great. The crowd. Uh, I haven't talked about this crowd. This fucking crowd was so hot. Uh, this crowd spent the, the cheapest tickets for this event were the equivalent of 300 us dollars. And this audience was so fucking loud and so wild and so good. This like fucking French crowd was unbelievably great. Uh, 
I don't know the last time I heard a this is awesome chant in a French accent, but I heard that today and it was pretty great. Um, but they were so into Jey Uso. I know some people have been like, ah, since it's WrestleMania match, he hasn't had it. He shouldn't be number one contender. He doesn't got it. Crowd's not into him. This crowd was fucking into him. Capital I into capital H him. Uh, he has the crowd totally. It was great. Uh, the match was solid. Uh, the an element that was kind of interesting was Damian Priest told the the now remaining members of Judgment Day who are not out with injury like, "Hey, I got this. I don't want your help. I don't need it, and I don't want it." And they helped anyway, and he won because they helped. And so he's pissed off about that uh, because he's got a little bit of a complex about it. Instead of just being like, "Yeah, please do cheat so that I can keep winning," he's just like, "Wait." And this is a thing that happens to heels. Heels have a thing where, because uh, Roman did it uh, pretty recently, uh, but it is a standard thing in, in wrestling, but specifically in WWE, where heels go through a phase when they are close to maybe going babyface, where they have cheated and they've used underhanded tactics for so long. But eventually uh, their opponent is just like, you couldn't do this without them. You had this because of them. You don't, it, you know, you don't exist without them. And it gets them. And they start thinking, no, I'm, I'm tough. I'm bad. I'm awesome. I don't need help. Watch, I'll beat you without any help. And it uh, eventually leads to their downfall or their face turn, which is also directly after their downfall. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if that happens here uh, or if we still have many months of, if they can't break up Judgment Day until... Rhea Ripley comes back, although she'll come back as a baby face anyway, so it's fine to not do that, but whatever. Um, Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill are your new WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. They defeated the Kabuki Warriors, Asuka and Kairi Sane, in a match that unfortunately was the worst match of the show. Um, I... So... Jade was lost during part of this match, but I do not blame her for that because uh, it felt like everyone got lost in that match at some point. Well, one thing, it was 17 minutes, and I can't believe I'm saying this. That's too long for this tag match. Uh, that's too long for people who are not tag team wrestlers that don't often do tag teams, which includes Bianca. That's definitely not her strong suit is tag team wrestling. Uh, you can pick some people that could do it. No problem. They had trouble with it. Uh, the other thing is that like, I am not a Kyrie Sane hater by any means. I think Kyrie Sane rules. Um, I don't know what the fuck happened to Kyrie Zane. She was incredible. And then she left WWE, uh, because she didn't want to wrestle anymore. And then she ended her like ambassador contract with WWE and started wrestling again. She got back into wrestling and was wrestling for stardom and by extension, New Japan and was doing great. And then that ended and she came back to WWE and she has not been great since she came back. And I don't know what the fuck's going on, but it's weird as hell because she is a phenomenal talent that just seems completely and utterly washed. And she's in the tag team with Asuka. So it should not it should work. But Kabuki Warriors have not worked. And they've been tag champs. So this match, the only thing I can think of, if I, if I really had to put my mind to it about like what the fuck happened here is, my uneducated guess is that they had a like 10 minute match worked out. And then right before they got out there, they were like, hey, we're short, like, Damien and Jay came to, came in early or Bailey and Naomi and Tiffany came in early. Something went wrong. Hey, you got, you got seven, you got 18 or something. Like they got told a number uh, and had to kind of like feel it out. But you could tell at one point, I mean, at one point, Asuka and Bianca who are not, who are on opposing teams are literally just talking to each other. You can see them uh, before they cut away. And they're trying to figure some shit out because at one point Kyrie wasn't the legal person in the match. And then so, but then she tagged Asuka and she, 
clearly didn't understand the uh the referee what the referee was saying to her so she goes to make the tag and the referee's like what no uh, okay fine uh it was very confusing and very weird um the match ended great some great double team moves uh between the two of them bianca and jade have a few moves they can do uh with each other that looked fucking phenomenal uh but yeah it was just a mess and that is a bummer for me a fan of both of bianca and jade i like jade a lot uh i think she is awesome i think she gets better and better all the time and uh i think she was put in aw in a championship role way too early i think the undefeated streak uh hurt her more than it helped her because she should have just been a wrestler that they had their eye on and they built up instead of being like, this girl is athletic and looks incredible. So we're just going to shoot her directly to the moon. And I think WWE, I mean, I say this as she is a champion, but WWE, I think is doing it smarter. She's with Bianca. They will, their, their next opponents will be a seasoned tag team that can carry the weight. Bianca is going to do a lot of the work. And then there will be a lot of hot tags and some power moves and people will go, Oh, they just used, they just used Jade for power moves and she doesn't do any of the work. And it's just like, yeah, that's, that's fine. Not everyone has to be the best wrestler on the wrestling show. Sometimes you could just be a cool ass, uh, physical specimen and just look dope as hell while you're doing cool shit. And that'll be also good. Uh, which is a bit to me anyway of, of, uh, of Jade. Um, but anyway, happy they're champions. I'm happy Bianca has something to do. I think they, they look great together. I think they work well together. They seem to have a rapport. It's good shit. Um, I'm into it. And then the main event, Cody Rhodes retained the undisputed WWE championship, defeating AJ Styles in a match that was pretty fucking good surprise surprise aj and cody put on a great fucking match uh the longest match of the night at 27 minutes uh great performance by both of them crowd was eating it up they were so into it uh this is the point that i will tell you that uh i think that happens in professional wrestling when it goes to or it just happens in europe A lot of European countries, the um, slogans and catchphrases and songs that are chanted or sung that are have to do with sports kind of also get into wrestling. So for context, if you say the word in a in a wrestling performance or in a, a sporting performance, phenomenal. Well, because it was very popular during FIFA's World Cup, the year a song about Phenomenal came out, uh, Phenomenal in in the song, uh, French fans will fucking sing part of that song. So when they go, the Phenomenal one, the crowd just started fucking singing. There is a chance at a two count. Instead of saying two when the referee counts one, two, and there's a kick out. Instead, there's a chance it's basically just like, Simply two, like simplement de, something to that effect. I don't believe it was simplement, but it was something to that effect of like that. Like, but it's basically just like only two. So it's like, duh. It's like a chant that happens at French wrestling shows. Why? I don't fucking know. That part I don't know. I can't tell you, but it happens. There was a lot of chanting in the main event. Uh, they also uh, referred to people as assholes. And so there were some chants in English. Uh, but a lot of the chanting uh, in this show was in French and they were very fucking loud and it was cool as hell. It's pretty fucking great. Anyway, uh, at one point, AJ Styles did a burning hammer. AJ Styles uh, gave Cody Rhodes a burning hammer and then Cody kicked out at one and then basically like powered up and it was very cool. And I know some people are fucking mad because people get mad about cool wrestling shit. Like I understand you're saying the burning, you shouldn't be able to kick out of a burning hammer. I mean, they don't even use it that much in WWE. And it's like, yeah, I know. But also it was fucking cool when it happens. 
the thing with wrestling is that sometimes it can just be fucking cool as hell and you should go oh fuck yeah that's cool as hell uh the cool shit in wrestling doesn't have to be when people are bleeding all over the place and hurting themselves it can also be when cool moves happen and then people go holy shit did you see that cool move that happened that can also happen in wrestling it's pretty great that way um cody also did a bit uh he did a cartwheel at one point because Stardust uh, used to do a cartwheel. And as Stardust, uh, when AJ Styles came into the WWE, uh, that was when Cody Rhodes was just ending doing Stardust and just about to leave because they were two ships passing in the night. Uh, they uh, AJ came to work for WWE when Cody went uh, to you know, do Ring of Honor and New Japan and, and uh, a brief stint in TNA as part of NWA crossover. Uh, so he didn't, they didn't run into each other and they didn't wrestle in WWE uh, because Cody K or Cody was really low on the card and they were pushing AJ. And then when Cody came back, AJ was out and then they weren't on the same brand. So this is the first time they've ever wrestled each other. And you wouldn't know it because they, weirdly, these two very good wrestlers have very good fucking chemistry. And it was a pleasure to watch them wrestle each other. A leg is done, everybody. I finished a leg. No need to sweep it, but I did finish it. So now it's time to move on to to other leg. We got to get to other leg going here. So it's going to go like this. Yeah. It's going to go like that. Put that on there. And then basically do what I just did, but for the other leg. So not that difficult. I need E... I need E and D, so I'll get E and D out here. Hello, Vicky. Welcome. Um, yeah, pay-per-view was solid. Uh, the, the premium live event, I should say, was solid. Um, I will not be watching the um, Saudi Arabia King and Queen of the Ring. I do not watch the Saudi Arabia shows. I do not have plans to watch that. I am undecided if I am going to watch SmackDown the night before. Uh, because that is also coming out of Saudi Arabia. Uh, and I, the thing is, uh, generally, if it was just me, I wouldn't. But because I often watch wrestling with friends, and I normally watch SmackDown with friends, uh, that I am often the person that is making that, uh, organizing and making it happen. So I don't have to do it. And so I probably won't. But I definitely am not going to be watching... Um, uh, the king of the ring king and queen of the ring tournament uh, i'll be skipping that so that's the next premium live event and there's one i think right almost right after that uh so last rook um this will be the first time this will be the first time they do it so a thing that wwe has started to do which i actually genuinely think fucking whips ass is if they are in another country or in the case of puerto rico another territory a non-continental U.S. territory or Canada. They also do this as well. Um, they used to do something where like if they had a Saturday show, the Friday night SmackDown that would be pre-taped, the previous week's SmackDown, they would tape uh, another episode directly after that. They started to do something. Uh, they did it with, uh, um, they didn't do it for Clash of the Castle, but they did do it for the Puerto Rican show and they also did it um, for the, the France show today, is they did a SmackDown in the same building. Um, and they're going to do that again for the Saudi Arabia show. So they'll do SmackDown. It won't be live. It will be live in several territories and then shown at normal time. Uh, and then in the Saudi Arabia, that'll be live then at a different time. So it'll still air at like 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, at uh, on Fox, but it will be recorded uh, live to tape in uh, in Saudi Arabia. But they did that, and it was great. Last night, SmackDown was fucking rad, um, and it lived it, it aired live in Europe. So a bunch of you know European people didn't have to stay up really late, uh, which is which is fun. It's a rare treat for them to not to stay up or watch it the next day. Um, 
So yeah, I, I don't plan on watching that SmackDown uh, because I don't watch the Saudi Arabia shows. That is my uh, that is my uh, opinion on that. So, but you know, still pretty good. Um, let's see. Uh, I don't think I have anything else to say about that. Let's get into some. Let's see. Are there any other wrestling news? Oh yeah, some wrestling news. WrestleMania 41 is going to be in Las Vegas. So I'm going to get to how we got to here. Rumors and speculation have been like, sometimes they announce WrestleMania, the next WrestleMania at the previous WrestleMania. They're like, in WrestleMania 40, it would not have been out of the ordinary for them to be like, and tune in for WrestleMania 41. But they didn't do that. They didn't say what it was. So people were like, when the fuck is WrestleMania? When's it going to be? There were talk that it was going to be in Minnesota because they have a big arena, uh, but they could do that in an arena that uh, it does have a roof, so it wouldn't be as cold in April. There was talk that maybe it would be in the Midwest, but be in May um, because a May show uh, would be warmer. Uh, and then it, it's mostly generally in April, but sometimes it is uh, in May. Uh, because then you could do WrestleMania, um, and that's silly in a way that I think is pretty great. But no, it's going to be April 19th and 20th, another two nights there. They're not going back. WrestleMania 41 in Las Vegas, uh, which is going to be great, except for the it's going to be expensive. I mean, there are some cheap places to stay, but it's going to be tough to for the people that like to do shows around WrestleMania. Vegas is a bit of a tough city. That's a bit of a, a, a tough one to get uh, everybody there at a reasonable uh, price. I think there's going to be a lot of like old Vegas. Uh, that's probably going to have to be where a bunch of people do shows, but it'll still be great. And there's some people that want to travel and there'll be, pe- look, I know some people who are in LA that already have hotel rooms. They immediately, as soon as it got announced, they booked hotel rooms because they were like, yeah, I'm going to that. For for my LA friends, it, it's a no-brainer uh, to go to Vegas. Uh, so I know some people that are very excited about this. Um, I think it's fine. I think the idea that for like doing it later in April isn't a bad call. Uh, 420 uh, WrestleMania is fun. Uh, that That's a fun bit of business. That does mean that the GCW collective shows, if they do a Sunday or Saturday night show that, and you know, it suddenly is midnight. That's going to, then it'll be 420. That's fun. Harold uh, with a tier one uh, for almost a year, 78 months. Let's throw the bear cave Lego site tier two blue emote in chat. Let's thank Harold for 78 months, which is just a ridiculous amount of months. Harold, thank you so much for your continued support it means the world to me. Um, that's so many goddamn months, but yeah, throw those, those emotes in the chat. I'm going to do that right now. Uh, that's just so many months and I appreciate you for all of the support. We're currently at 30 subscribers. The goal is to get to 50. I shut up about how many subscribers I have when we reach 50. Have we reached 50 yet? No. So the reference, uh, references to it continue. Uh, glad to be here. Wyatt. Glad to have you. Oh, yeah. So that's the date of WrestleMania 41. Um, Sorry, Minnesota. Sorry, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Apparently you were you were in the running. Uh, Sorry, U.S. Bank Stadium. Um. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that'll be good. Um. Let's see. Other wrestling things maybe we want to talk about here. Uh, I, I said uh, that uh, that WWE Backlash, um, lots of people were there. Tickets were very pricey, very expensive tickets. But because those tickets were so expensive, they broke their attend. They broke a gate record, not attendance, gate. Um. They set the biggest arena gate. So that's, so that's two qualifiers. One, that's gate. 
Uh, and two, that's arena. So the most money they've made in an arena. Um, official estimate of 11,682 people. It's a small place. They were fucking packed in. There was, there was no room for much of anything because they were just taking up so much goddamn uh, space with just bodies. Um, let's see. Uh, they didn't announce the gate, but uh, the previous record was uh, Money in the Bank from last year, which had a gate of 3.32 million. So it's more than 3.32 million. Um, adjusted for inflation, the uh, the record is believed to be WrestleMania five. Um, let's see. Um, because that show adjusted for inflation would be about four million dollars. Uh, let's see. Uh, Meltzer mentioned that the gate record was set as ticket prices were the highest for any arena show in WWE history, with an average ticket price sitting around three hundred dollars. Sorry, I said the bottom one. That's average. Average ticket was three hundred dollars. So there were some that were cheaper. My apologies for getting that information incorrectly. Uh, but yeah, average is three hundred dollars, uh, the equivalent of three hundred dollars. Uh, but also, all those motherfuckers had a good time. That crowd was amped and hyped and feeling it and loving it so that's cool as shit good on them. let's see um uh let's see here what we got going on here um more Okay, so we, we have to talk about this because it um, context made this story more and make more sense to me than the original. Originally, I was like, I don't know what the fuck this means because you could just make a free account. Why is everybody mad? So this is a Helldivers 2 thing, right? Um, uh originally now originally when they were like all right hell divers 2 is coming out it's on playstation and it's gonna be on steam and we're having an issue right now because it was um so popular and flooded their servers and in a way to deal with congestion they were like okay it is it's optional it's not required for you to link your account you don't have to link your uh playstation account with your steam game um and they said that would be temporary. And a lot of people like were just like, yeah, sure, whatever. You, you won't go. That, that sounds great. Um, and so then they changed it. And they're saying, well, starting in June, uh, right now it's going to appear. And then eventually, once it gets to June, if you're not doing it, you don't get to do it. Uh, and you might say to yourself, well, PlayStation accounts, that's just free. You can just make a PlayStation account and you can link it. And that's fine. Like, that's not a big deal. Like, Pat, you, you probably did it. And like, yeah, I did it. It's no big deal. And to me, that wasn't a big deal. It wasn't something I thought about. But the context that I was missing, and I'm going to say this, the context I was missing um, was that there are a lot of countries in the world and regions in the world where there is no PlayStation presence and you can't just make an account. And those people won't be able to play Helldivers 2, even though they bought it on Steam. So Steam is basically like, if you're from that region and you want a refund, we will handle your refund. Because it it was, it, and again, it's not just because they were like, oh, well, if you don't get, to, you know, like you don't get to play the game, like some of the features or whatever. Like, no, it's like, no, you won't. If you don't have the account, you don't get to play it. Um. And that's probably what it's going to be like going forward. But that is a thing to take into account when you're like, why are people mad about this? Why why are people review bombing this? Uh, why is Arrowhead like taking the L on this one? Um, new players will have to make a free PSN account if they don't have one and link it starting Monday, May 6th. Sorry, uh, current player. So that's new players. So new players, as of Monday, you got to do it. Current players have until June. So if you want to get some gaming in before, you know, if you were in a region where you just can't do it. Um, and then the Arrowhead CEO is just like, 
Yeah, we encourage you to send feedback to PlayStation customer support. They're basically just like, they have apologized. They're like, yeah, we, this is not on us. This is not our decision. We're clearly not happy about this. And you feel for them because they made a really great game and the Steam, the PC version plays really well. And it sucks that this is happening. Uh, now, the reason why you're like, Pat, why, why are they bothering with this shit? What do they care? Uh, supposedly, this layer is for, you know, they're like, well, this is very important. Um, uh, plays a critical role in protecting our players from getting grief and abuse because you need to be able to report people through the PlayStation uh, stuff. And to report people, you need to have an account. And for people to go through temporary or long-term or permanent bans, they also need an account. And I get it. And that makes sense. But it still fucking sucks. And it does mean that people who bought the game who are in a region where Sony does not have a presence are shit out of luck. Uh, and that is a big old bummer. Uh, so again, uh, I, yeah, I did not have all the context for this and now I have more context for it and it makes more sense to me. Um, but yeah, I didn't have it all at once. Let's see. Um, Um, there were no pl that, Hey, here's a fun thing I can say. Uh, there were no announced to layoffs since Thursday, since I announced, I, I talked about all of those announced layoffs that had happened since Monday that nobody got, nobody got reportedly laid off on Friday. So that's, that is a, uh, small bit of comfort. Uh, I know that does not help much at all, but, but it's true. Yes, congratulations. I don't have to report on layoffs. Uh, I'm very excited to not have to report on more layoffs since Thursday. I'm sure that there will be more to come. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nintendo is being Nintendo um, again. Uh, you may remember that they uh, shut down Yuzu. They, they won all that stuff with Yuzu. Well, a lot of people were like, hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take all the stuff from Yuzu and I'm just going to upload my own repository uh, so that we can keep this thing alive. Um, and Nintendo's just like, yeah, we're going to stop that. <laughs> we're going to stop you from doing that. Um, uh, this is reported by GameIndustry.biz. Uh the console maker filed DMCA takedowns against 8,535 repositories on GitHub. Um, GitHub says contact the owners to give them an opportunity to make changes. Uh, and that, of course, is take the shit down, you fucking idiots. GitHub does not want this heat. We do not care about you. We do not care. We do not want Nintendo heat. What are you fucking doing? If you are going to take this, why are you putting it back on GitHub? GitHub is not going to tell Nintendo to fuck off, you dumbasses. Um, having searched through the forks of the repositories, it found that all or most of them are infringing to the same extent as the parent repositories. Um, now... Should there be emulation of modern consoles that exist? I think so. I think if you bought a bunch of games and your console is borked, you can figure out another way to play those games. Um, I think preservation in a long time, a long term, is incredibly important. Uh, especially with Nintendo shutting down services, making certain games not playable, or DLC for games no longer playable. Uh, I think preservation is incredibly important. I will go on the record that I think preservation fucking whips ass and is cool and necessary. Um, but I do think that if you're going to fucking do it, you be part of a nonprofit or you put it in a place that doesn't give a shit about Nintendo, which is not GitHub. Come the fuck on. Uh, Lord Crashton says, I've tried to use GitHub recently and it's a very unique language of UI design that makes very little sense to me. 
what I'm directed to it. Yeah. Um. So GitHub does make compiling things, collecting things, uh, access to things um, easier than having to like watch a YouTube video where people are linking to archive.org links or or uh, like um you're like is this is this the version of cheat engine i should download we, did so, this person said they put up a cheat engine that doesn't have all the bloatware and the garbage are were they lying oh no this is full of bloatware and garbage shit github does make a lot of that uh, simple but github is github is not user focused it is repository focused so it's it's target it's only as good as the person who is making a repository of something so you'll so it's hit or miss if you are someone that's just like i would like to use uh ytp i would like to use the youtube downloader um I, I would like to, you know, like I would like to download and backups of video files and audio files from places and run it in a command line. And I know what to do when I get to the command line, but I want to do that. And you're like, I think I'm going to have to get the repository and then hope that someone's made a YouTube tutorial on how to do this. Uh, because the repository is not going to walk you through all the steps uh, to get this shit done. They're going to do they're going to do whatever they need to do to make it make sense for them, but they're not going to necessarily worry about your ass, uh, which is a problem if you are not used to that. I am somewhat used to dealing with uh, uh, websites and, th and, and directories and repositories that are not taking my Bet they're not looking out for me. They're not looking out for number one. They're looking out for themselves. They're not looking out for me, the consumer. I am uh, fairly confident in those in using those kinds of services to get what I need to get out of them. I'm pretty confident in that. But I understand that not everyone is. Um, Lorecraft says I I uh, I have given up on trying to get emulation on my own pocket if the GitHub for the installer didn't have a written guide on it because a list of files I could download looks like nonsense. Yes. So a written guide, a video guide. Some people upload video guides uh, to GitHub. But like I said, it's not like GitHub has a standard. Uh, they have a standard of a lot of things, but they don't have a standard of usability or teachability. They don't, they don't, they don't qual quantify that. They don't qualify that. They don't demand that of the pe of people. So like, yeah, uh, I, there's a uh, program I use that I am not going to uh, discuss what it does on on this stream. You don't get to know that shit, but I have it. I have the, the GitHub for it bookmarked because they are constantly changing how it works. This particular program that I'm using, and I constantly need to refer to the GitHub, which does have an incredibly great video tutorial with audio and links and and a description that goes with it. Um, uh, they, they're constantly uploading or co updating, I should say. Uh, and that has made my life way easier than if they were just like, it was just existed out there. Uh, so that is, that is helpful. Um, oh, it's past 10. Hey, I didn't even fucking know it was past 10 PM. I'm going to take a pause for the cause in a moment. I'm going to pop out this one piece here, uh, working on the waste. Uh, we'll, we'll get going in on that. Uh, cause I'm going to need a few more pieces here to get this going, but we're going to get our waste built, uh, or start to get it built, uh, from our kit. So we can start putting this thing together. Um, so you don't want a list of files. You want to look for the release section. Uh, it should have what you want to download. Yes. You want to look in the releases section, but like sometimes it is just like a bunch of things and the releases also need uh, uh, libraries. And sometimes people on GitHub don't put in the part where they're like, where are the libraries that you need to download? Which libraries do you need? Do you need this thing? Do you need that thing? And they don't always include that that's in the documentation, but the documentation might be written by somebody who thinks you understand all this, or they don't care if you understand it or not. 
uh, because then there are people who will follow through and maybe somebody else will actually write the tutorial for them if they just put the stuff out there. Because uh, sometimes people just put things up on a, uh, a GitHub uh, for their own reference or their friend's reference. Anyway, we'll get into more uh, shenanigans and model kit building uh, after a pause for the cause. Hello. I am going to keep this brief because there are not many of you watching right now. And I, I do want to say most of the people that are watching right now are, yeah, uh, almost all of you watching right now are subscribers, but there are a few people that aren't. So first and foremost, if you are uh, currently subscribed to the Build War Workshop, you can throw the Bear Cave, the Lego, the site, the Tier 2 Blue Emote in the chat. Being a subscriber is the easiest way to support what I do here through cash money, like Harold did. You could be, be like H-Bomb and friends. Or your Prime Gaming Token. If you have Amazon Prime, you link it with your Twitch, uh, you get uh, you can support somebody there. Uh, it would be great if you supported me. Twitch is going to be changing how some of the payouts for that work, and I will be losing a couple dollars a month now. Uh, but if you want to use your Prime Token, you should still use your Prime Token because it's still fucking rad and great. Uh, cash money is also really good. Love that too. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but yeah, if you want to be a subscriber, feel free to do that. It will be great. Uh, bits and coins are always appreciated. If you want to join the, uh, cheerleader board, if you want to gift to sub and be in the gift sub leaderboard, there have been zero gift subs in the month of May. If you want to be the first person to get the sub in May, you could do that at any time. Uh, but right now it would also be cool. Uh, we are currently at 30 subscribers. The goal is to get to 50 subscribers. So if you want to jump in on that, you can. But there are other ways to support what I do here besides that. Like, you could always go and blah, 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 blah. Join my Patreon at patreon.com slash patbear at the one, three, five, or $10 tier. There are different rewards for the different tiers. Consider joining me on Patreon if you wanted to. You don't have to, but if you'd like to, it'd be great. Um... Yeah, see if there's a tier that's right for you on Patreon. Also, while I've got you here and I'm talking about ways you can support the channel, I've got a YouTube channel over on youtube.com slash patbear. Subscribing is free. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And then if you want to become a member, if you wanted to support me financially over there on YouTube, uh, for $2 a month, you get my Wednesday video on Tuesday. It's a little, little least I could do. You get a little bit of an early peek at, at one of the videos that I do in my long running video series. Um, and those are all monthly ways to support me. But also you could do a one-time donation to my Ko-Fi or my PayPal. You want to cut out the middleman, go directly to PayPal. Uh, everything I make through direct donations, through YouTube, which includes AdSense, so watching my videos helps me out, through Patreon and through Twitch, all goes into a fund. And out of that fund, I spend money to build to buy model cuts kits to build them the argyagya right here that i'm currently working on right now the argyagya i would not have been able to buy this argyagya without past uh patron support so thank you very much uh patrons and uh subscribers and all of that i was able to pick up this cool looking kit when it was at a good price on uh, amazon i was very excited and happy to do that now speaking of amazon uh, the next kit I'm going to be building is a Lego set that I just got today from my Amazon wish list from an anonymous buyer. Uh, that'll be the next thing that I build because uh, somebody bought it for me. So it jumps the queue and I made a dedicated video on my YouTube that I'll, everybody will be able to see tomorrow. It'll go out to everybody tomorrow. Uh, if you, that's right, you would also like to be uh, uh, a person that buys something and has their item jump the queue and become the next thing that I build, you could buy something from my Amazon wish list. That's the easiest way to do that. I have inexpensive kits, like little cheap Lego sets, expensive model kits, uh, you know, model kits that are, are that are like 18 bucks or model kits that are $70. Like, don't buy that. But, you know, sometimes people want to spend a lot of money and that rules. Uh, I've got model kits uh, from Pokemon and uh, uh a couple Digimon, Lego sets, all kinds of different things that I would be happy to build if you wanted to pick it up. Uh, like I said, I got a small Lego set that just came in the mail that I'm excited to work on. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, 
See if there's something there that you'd like to see me put together. There's some gear at the bottom because I could always use some gear. A good price on a maybe get me a backup pair of snipper clips because these have been have served me well, but they're they got a shelf life and maybe you want to get that or another stand because it's nice to have stands for my model kits. Maybe you want to get me a, another one of those. You could do that if you wanted to. You don't have to. All the things I'm talking about here are optional. You don't do any of this shit. But if you wanted to, people ask sometimes, how can I support you? And I want to have options like my throne wish list. The wish list no one's ever used, but it's nice having an alternative to Amazon. So I have a wish list on throne. And then, of course, the, mo the most complicated, convoluted way to support me, USA Gundam Store. You go to USA Gundam Store. You buy a gift card from USA Gundam Store. They send you an email with the gift card code. Then you use that gift card code. Uh, you don't use it to buy anything. You use it by uh, copying and pasting it and sending it to me. Uh, you send me a whisper on Twitch or a DM on Twitter because my DMs are open with that gift card code. And then I use that gift card code to buy something from USA Gundam Store. And that's just how it works, my friends. That's all it is. Uh, may the fourth be with you. If you want to buy me something, you can. Uh, if you wanted to. Join my Discord. If you want to join uh, uh, some high quality, cool people, you can join my Discord. I post build photos at the end of every stream. People post stuff they're working on. It is a cool place uh, full of awesome people, and you are more than welcome to come hang out on the Discord if you wanted to. Uh, a couple video links for you to check out. My most recent Pat Bears Anime Club is me recommending shows from this season. Uh, this might be a great season uh, of anime for you to just catch up on some other stuff. But maybe you're like, I like something new. Pat, what do you recommend? Well, I got a couple shows that uh, I recommend in that video for you to check out. And then, of course, that's new stuff. What about old anime, Pat? Do you have any old anime recommendations? I do. I have an ongoing video series that happens every Wednesday called Kuma Bear. And this Wednesday or this past Wednesday when I put up a new episode, it was about Oran High School Host Club. Fantastic show from the 2000s. Uh, all this month, I am recommending shows from the 2000s that I think is just neat. Um, so you should check that out because I worked hard on that video uh, and I would like you to watch it. And un in under a minute, maybe I can convince you to check out an anime you may have missed from the 2000s. That's available on Crunchyroll. Um, so... Speaking of anime, I do have an anime to talk to you about. I didn't get a chance to watch the two shows because of wrestling today. There's another show that I would have covered today, but instead I'm going to cover it on Monday. And normally, normally, we do Manga Monday around here. It's good alliteration. Also, because often on Monday I don't have much to talk about, so we can do it in the second hour, or I haven't watched a lot of anime, we can do it in the second hour. Since I only have one show to watch today... Instead of the usual Manga Monday, tonight we're we're going to talk about manga on a Saturday. And because I don't have a good alliteration for that, I have come up with a light novel title for the segment. So I'm going to take a pause for the cause. I'm going to drink some water. We're going to get back into working on this model kit. And then I'll also talk to you about uh, a manga that I'm reading in a segment I will be calling, for, at least for tonight, that time I only had one anime to talk about, so I talked about a manga I've been reading as well. In pure and true light novel fashion. Uh, and we're going to dramatically transition back to the overhead and move on with this. Uh, I'm going to itch my back there right now. <sighs> All right. Now for the manga section, a.k.a. That time I only had one anime to talk about, so I talked about a manga I've been reading as well. And in pure light novel fashion, we will be talking about the anim the manga, I should say. I am invincible with my luck stat at 999 in infallible instant, instant death magic. This is not an isekai. Uh, but it is... A fun female-led, uh, uh, kind of—it's kind of a kick story. It's a school uh, action series. Um, she was abandoned, so I actually—you know what? I shouldn't say it. it's kind of is. It is. It's part of the banished kicked because she was a uh, she was left to die, uh, but did not die. 
So, um, Sachi is our main character. She has no magical power. She has a magical power rating of one. That makes her, with a magic power of one, you can't really do anything because the more magic power you have, the better spells you can do. And if you were a commoner, well, you wouldn't have magic at all. And so that's okay. You would just live your life. Asachi is part of a prestigious family of magicians. The fact that she has such little magic is devastating to them. They are bummed the fact fuck out. And they are so bummed by this that at age five, they leave her in the woods. They just, that's right. Her family just leaves her to die because she shouldn't be so embarrassing as to not have any magic power. The least she could do is just go away. So our girl with a magic power of one is just abandoned until a, uh, a magician shows up. A high level magic user, uh, only referred to as the sage, uh, who lives in the forest, finds her and is just like, yeah, I had to make, like, it makes sense. Yeah, you don't have any magic power, but that doesn't mean you can't do anything. I actually have some magic that you could be really good at. And in fact, I have magic that only you would be good at. Because uh, it says in the title, but I haven't said it yet in the description. The thing with Sachi is that she has an abundance of luck. Her luck stat is at level 999, which they, which her family considered to be completely useless. Why would that be good? Why would that matter? Why would that be good? Who would care about that? That doesn't matter. It's only about your magic uh, power. So, uh, so she's trained and basically her teacher is just like your magic, your talent could change common sense of magic. And our girl doesn't really have street smarts or common sense, uh, because she understands that the magic I use is weird. Uh, and I should specifically say the magic that our girl uses is um magic that relies on luck like instant death she can just ca cast instant death and instant death should have a i think that, i can't remember the percentage i didn't write the percentage uh but basically she's just like yeah um i make the impossible possible people don't use these spells because the success rate is too low but it doesn't matter for me because my luck stat is so high that I can just use instant death magic because with a hundred percent success rate, like, yeah, I don't have to worry about that. Like it's not a big deal. Like there is no, no magic is a big deal for our girl. She can just fucking do it. She is not bothered. She does not have to worry. She, it, it will be okay. Also, this show is, or so this manga is queer. It's pretty queer. She meets a girl and uh, at school, um, uh, I imagine the light novel is probably more explicit about it. Cause again, our girl is, is real goofy about this shit. Uh, and it's a lot of people just being like, well, th your luck is going to run out. And it's like, literally, no, it won't. Or why is a commoner even was a commoner doing in magic school? Like, it's just like, oh, it's not a big deal. It's not, it's literally not a problem. Everything is okay. Uh, so she's kind of like turning the world on its head. And it is appropriately in the right moments, goofy as hell. Uh, and it is silly at parts and really fun. Why did that fall off? I don't know. Okay, did I do this wrong? It's hard to see which way this is supposed to go. Is it supposed to go like that? It is supposed to go like that. Okay. So that's the front of it. Hmm. Okay, that's the front of it. Sorry, everybody. I'm uh, a little confused here if I did this correctly or not. 
Sometimes you just don't know. These must be on the front. Hmm. Did I put these on backwards? I did. I think I put these on backwards. Okay. Let me put these on right. Hold on. Hey, everybody chill out. Put these on back. I put it on backwards. Put this together wrong. Occasionally, instructions from 10 years ago are a little off. And if I was not also trying to have a conversation with y'all and talk about a thing that I'm enjoying, I would do better. But sometimes that's not possible. And I'm just going to miss a step or miss something. But I think I figured this part out. I think I've got this waist together now. Oof. The air is off in the house and it's getting stuffy in this room. It's okay because we only got another 40 minutes of the stream, which is is fine. It thanks everybody for hanging out. But uh, but yeah, okay. So I got that part done. Now we can move on to the next part of the build, which is the front part of the waist. So we can get that going. Uh, all right. Let's do this here. Be nice if we could get body complete on this kit, but there's a lot of parts to this waist, so I don't know if we'll get all of it done, but we'll get some of it done. At the very least, we're getting plenty of the cool gold pieces here. Uh, Last person says, I couldn't imagine it. it's over 90% humidity outside here. Yeah, we're not hitting that kind of heat. Um, this is a weird time. A spring around here is is a weird time where, where like, um, it's... Seven, it's in the mid to high 70s during the day, but at night it drops down. But my room doesn't keep up with how it's... My room is often warmer than it is outside. This is the smallest room in the house. It is the hottest in the summer and coldest in the winter. Um, but also, it's small. My door is closed, so I am not disrupting uh, the people in this house. Uh, but the air was on when the stream started, so I couldn't have my window open. Uh so the window is closed, but I have three monitors on and I have my computer kicking out heat and it's, you know, it's not processing at all, but it's, it's moving heat around. Uh, so things are getting warm around here is basically what I'm saying. Uh, things are getting a little, a little hot and heavy in here. Um, and it like in like a week, it will be so warm that the air will be on 24 hours a day and it won't be a big deal. Uh, not 24 hours, but it'll be on for like 18 hours a day, you know, and it'll be cold enough. It'll be cold enough that when the air goes off very late, um, it'll still be residual cool. But yeah, right now air conditioning is not on and it is warm in this room and stifling. Um, also no bet this bedroom does not have a fan in it like an overhead fan because i could have that on and that would like circulate some air and be nice don't have that um i have thought about getting a small fan that i could just put like over there kind of blowing some air um because that would be nice to maybe just circulate the air around i could there are i could install i because there's no overhead light in this room because the thing like normally there would be like a, a, a lamp and a fan but there isn't in this room um so i could install a fan i guess at some point maybe i should have years ago but i never did all right i we are putting in um we're going to put in this uh front part here and i have to figure out where this goes this looks like that this looks like that and then this piece needs to go in there. Uh, so that was the manga. I'm sorry. I got distracted by it suddenly feeling very fucking warm in here. Um, so, yeah, there we go. There's our there's our front skirt. It did just flick off this off. Why are these so rough and weird? Um, but it did just knock one of these out. That's fun. Um, but, yeah, front skirt secured. Time to work on uh, the ba the butt of this. The butt of this is a is a I said butt because it's a big old piece. You can see right there. Uh, but yeah, that was the manga I've been reading. It's cute. Uh, it's fun. It is it is not lazy, but it's like light in its like approach of like this girl got fucking abandoned, and she certainly feels bad about that. 
but the sage that rescued her and took care of her was like a mother to her and they had a great relationship but the story isn't about them living together it's about her in school and she is having a good time being like a weirdo in school and uh and showing people that they're wrong uh and you imagine at least a few rivals will become friends there'll be some new friends coming in they are um they're oh i haven't even talked about how there's like the prince is kind of coming around about her uh because she she just like thoroughly rejected her uh him there's a dude that like he was the tough guy he was the tough strong guy and now he's dealing with her and trying to like make that work and yeah there's there's some there's some fun jumping around in there of people like trying to figure this shit out figure out what her fucking deal is um it's pretty good uh and again that is i am invincible with my luck stat at 999 and in in and sorry infailable insta death magic um and we're gonna uh and that was a new segment that will probably return next saturday because i will most likely I, I, I know next Saturday I'm going to be fucking busy and probably won't get to, to watch Whisper Me a Love Song until Sunday. Um, so I probably only have one anime to talk about next week, which we'll talk about now. Uh, and so we will maybe see in the future a return of that time I only had one anime to talk about. So I talked about manga I've been reading as well. Um, it is This isn't the anime we're going to be talking about because I'll put that in there. But I will say that... Um, if you are if you are getting caught up on that time I got reincarnated as a slime season three, I will tell you that things are heating up. Uh, we are getting into some of the action. If your complaint about the series, uh, this part of the series so far is like it's mostly just been a chill slice of life uh, because it wasn't that chill uh, by the end of season two and suddenly got chill again, which I love. I love the chill parts of it. The action is coming. Uh, if you've been waiting for it, if that has been your big issue with this season of that time I got reincarnated as slime, uh, shit is hitting the fan. Some things have been going on. Uh, and we'll, we'll start to see some shit. And I, and I know what's going on with it because I have read the manga. Uh, but no, we're not talking about that. We're talking about episode five of Windbreaker. Shit is heating up in Windbreaker as well. Um, so we'll talk about that. Uh, so, uh, in episode five, uh, um, a group of our, our, our boys, uh, uh, Bufferin boys, uh, Sakura, Suo, uh, Yumea and Tigari and, uh, Shugishida, uh, with Neri there as well. They enter the rival, uh, delinquent school, uh, Shishitorin's uh, turf. Uh, and uh, Koji is there. Very excited about it. Um, apparently, uh, whereas our uh, um, delinquents have worked on making improvements to their area and their town, that is not the case here. They do not give a shit about this town or its people because there's graffiti everywhere. Um, there is... Uh, 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 pubs are closed, like things are not looking great. Um, they are escorted to a abandoned theater called the Orion, Orion, I should say, Orion. Um, and basically this abandoned theater, they scratched out the name. So it just says Ori. Uh, so basically it's just like a cage fighting place now. Uh, um, Basically, they're just like the dude has turned it. He, he his quote is like he's turned it into a gala. Uh, basically, they've they've made it they've made it just like they made a fight club. I guess is the best way to describe it. Um, let's see. Uh, basically, there there's a, there's a like a five on five fight. Basically, uh, one on one. Uh, Shugashida, uh goes and. Uh, just punches him in the face with a quick, quick little, like he gets it. He just like 
you know, distracts him and then goes for a, a, a knockout punch. Um, but he's fine. He's totally okay. He absorbs the, the punishment and then gets a counter punch. And he's like, hey, if you're going to reference my boss, you have to say son. You can't just like throw it out like that. You got to do it right. If you're going to, if you're going to call his name, you have to say it properly, uh, which is pretty, which is more badass than I have described it and pretty fucking cool. Um, uh, Choji is fucking psyched about this. He's like, hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's what I'm talking about. This is what I'm looking for. Yeah. Because as, as you may remember, uh, he does not give a shit about the, the, his, you know, they're not his compatriots. They're just tools because he is just a strong fighter who is bored. So the idea that like, he's not like mad that one of his guys got counterpunched. Um, because he's just like thrown off the stage to make room for the next person. Uh, let's see. Uh, Suo, nobody really knows uh, much about Suo's like fighting ability because he went to a different middle school. So everyone's just kind of like, yeah, we don't, we kind of don't fucking know what's going to happen with him, which is fun. That's a fun bit of business. Um, Suo just absorbs a bunch of, he doesn't do anything. He just absorbs a bunch of punches uh, or, or he just starts, you know, absorbing them, but he's actually not absorbing them. In fact, he's dodging. He's just really dodging them. Um, and he's just kind of playing around. Sakura's just like, oh, that's your style. Okay. Um, and they're basically like, is it, is, this, is he like sadistic or is he trying to teach them something? We're not sure. Um, Apparently, this dude was one of the people that was laughing at uh, his own schoolmate who got beat up. So he's trying to teach him a lesson. Um, uh, but the fight is basically like at a standstill and, and get they try to call it off. Um, let's see. Uh, and basically, it's just like, actually, he's not even a part of this. He's not a part of the school. So... Uh, don't even worry about it. Uh, and apparently Suo is just like, you know, you, you got to try a little empathy. Um, it, and like, I, I'm not describing it fully, uh, to justice, but it, it is a cool moment of this guy. Like this dude laughed at his supposed teammate getting hurt. And Suo just like completely and utterly embarrassed him. Basically like forced him out of the school uh, and, and all of this just by completely humiliating him. It was pretty neat. Uh, I Who knows if Suo is actually strong? We'll, we'll find out later. There's going to be more fights because this is the end of the episode. Um, and it was a pretty fucking dope episode of uh, Windbreaker. Because um, he has been like the gentleman. But yeah, he, he, you know pretty strong and that was cool uh and basically like shishi torin are the polar opposites like we're starting to really understand that you know we knew that the leader was different but it turns out like yeah this is just a these delinquents don't have honor they don't have code they're just like a different style and it's interesting to see that i when i heard about this anime and i watched the first episode I thought this was a high school battler uh, show, not a high schoolers battling each other show. I did not realize that. I thought this was going to be like, let's follow our main character who looks different and has a code and has never really fit in anywhere. And he's going, he's excited about going to school for delinquents because he was like, fine. If everyone thinks I'm a delinquent, I'll show them that I'm a, you know, what that actually means. Careful what you wish for. And instead he's like immediately found community and found family. And that's just like beautiful and great. And then the action is really fun. It's animated really well. Uh, it's just like really fucking cool. This kit does not want to stand up late or does not want to lay down because of the big butt and the rockets on the top. Uh, 
yeah, this kid is not going to cooperate properly with laying it down to take photos of it or to show you what it looks like as I'm working on it. Uh, I guess if I can do it like that, maybe. Yeah, if I do it like that, maybe it'll stay up. Yes, okay. So I can I can hold it up like this. It's like we're on. But that's Windbreaker. Uh, Windbreaker is pretty fucking dope right now. Uh, I'm having a good time with it. All right, so we got to build um, shoulders now. Um, I think we're definitely going to finish this kit up on Monday. We're not going to finish it tonight, of course. Uh, and we'll probably get started with the Lego set on Monday. Because uh, all we have now is we have the two shoulders. We have the, uh, the shoulder weapons. Um, we have the regular weapons. We got a sword we got to put together. Uh, and the beam sabers, which can combine into a double beam saber. And then the uh, the shoulders have the big shields that attach to it that can also pop off that have all of these. We got all these cool green effects parts. We got our beam parts. We got our beam sabers, which are I love the look of these beam sabers. Uh, and then we have all our uh, shoulder shields stuff. Um, but as I'm working on this kit, as I work on the shoulders now, uh, I have a request from you, the viewer of this stream. If you're watching this live, hello. I would like you to write into the chat, if you would, if you wouldn't mind. What have you been up to? What are you up? To, what are you watching right now? What are you playing? Are you watching any anime? Is there an ongoing series that you can't get enough of and you're, you can't wait to tell me about it? Um, uh, I would love to hear from you about that. If there is a TV show, are you watching any sports, hockey or basketball? Are you checking that out? Watching any wrestling lately? What are you into? What are you up to? What games are you playing if you're playing any video games? Uh, for me, uh, I did not have any D&D &D in the past uh, uh, two days. Since Thursday, none of that. Uh, watching a lot of wrestling on Friday and today. Uh, I caught a um, New Japan show. I have watched half of a pro wrestling Noah show um, because there was a, a slight change of plans and a wrestler I really like ended up sitting in. And that was really fun. Tajiri showed up in pro wrestling Noah. Uh, and that is fucking cool as hell because I love Tajiri. So I was like, I'm going to watch this match with Tajiri in it. Um, so I'm watching a lot of wrestling because as you may be aware, I really fucking like wrestling. Uh, and then today there was more wrestling for me to watch. So I watched a lot of that. Uh, tonight's plan after the stream, uh, collision, AW collision will not be on. So I usually watch the replays of AW collision, uh, but that will not be happening. So I cannot watch that. So my plan instead is I am going to watch, uh, the crap shoot. Uh, loading ready runs crap shoot. Uh, the, the thing they have, they have a thing called crap shot, um, uh, which is a, when they used to do this where, so, uh, crap shots are short joke video sketches. Crap shoot was a series they did where they would, um, come up with an idea, sometimes pitched by the audience. They would write that idea down, uh, and then they would pitch, maybe they would shoot and they would shoot that they would write uh, pitch it write it shoot it and then maybe even edit it sometimes they wouldn't edit sometimes they would edit a couple that they had sometimes they would write several they might film two they might write one and go as they were working on it and go actually this will be better with people who are not here or or, or uh we need props for this or whatever uh they brought it back today and i have not watched it yet because it was happening while i was watching professional wrestling so that's my plan tonight is to at least start that and then probably watch the rest of it tomorrow because I have a late night wrestling show tomorrow. Uh, Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling usually does shows that happen while I am asleep, but they're having a show start early enough uh, tomorrow night or they happen Saturday night. So when I'm doing this stuff, so I don't get to see it. So I am going to be watching uh, that show tomorrow. And because that's tomorrow... Uh, late night, uh, I can stay up a little late tonight too and just sleep in a little. That's my goal for tomorrow is to sleep in. Um, 
And then also, I am going to mail out stuff to renew my passport card. And I, so I have to fill out some forms tomorrow. I found my checkbook. Very important that I found my checkbook because I don't write checks that often. It was in a drawer. I knew what drawer it was in. I just didn't know where that drawer was or where in the drawer it was. And I found what I needed. So now I can write uh, a check and then fill out and print out a form. And then on Monday, I'm going to the post office and I'm going to mail out. And I need to mail out so that I can get my new passport card before my passport expires in August and it becomes incredibly difficult. Lord Crashton asks, do you remember when you last wrote a check? Yes. Sometime two years ago, I had to write a check for something. Uh, it was, oh, it was to pay off, um, a, it was actually a dental thing. And I had to mail in a check because I had put it on my debit card and it was fine. And then there was an additional charge that they didn't tell me about. And they sent me a bill and I could have paid it through a website or sent them a check. And so I sent them a check, Lord Crash. That's the last time that I have used a check was two years ago, which can explain why I could not find it. Um, now I'm going to go back to through what you all have said. Uh, Harold says, uh, more Pokemon TCG. I have a great run on stream last night where I only lost one game. Fuck yeah, Harold. That rules. That's so, it's so nice when you have a winning streak while you are streaming because you are trying to keep up with keeping an eye on chat. And also you are distracted because you're making sure the stream is running and all of that. And maybe you're explaining stuff, which could theoretically help you, but also could uh, just keep you uh, from, from doing well on it. So that's awesome. Congratulations, Harold. That's very cool that you were able to uh, win despite all of the bonus stuff in, on your plate. Um, uh, uh, Pazzy says victory Gundam is real good halfway in and if it stays as good till the end, it might be top two or three Gundam for, for me. That's awesome. Yeah, I like Victory Gundam. It's not in my top five, but it's uh, it's a strong series. And I am glad you're enjoying it. Because yeah, like I said, it is, it, is, it is still a very strong series, even if it's not like my, you know, in my, in my personal top five. Uh, it's still very good. And I'm glad you're enjoying it. It's always nice to have a good Gundam series to watch. When you want to watch Gundam series, uh, Harold says, well, it's easy to keep up with chat when you don't have any viewers. You're, you know what, Harold, you're right. You, you, you are correct. Um, when, when, when the numbers are low, it is, uh, it is not that difficult to, to ignore it. But if chat's moving at all, it can be, uh, it can be a little tough to keep track of all that stuff. All right, I think I did. I think I connected these two right, but we'll find out later. Uh, we got to put together some weapon pieces here that go on the shoulders. We can just actually, you know what? We don't have a lot of time left, so we can panel line this. We can panel line these uh, pauldrons and then attach them, and then we can attach weapons into it later. So let's just panel line these and stick them on. Stick our shoulders on. Um, Lester says, I caught up on voice actor radio and I'm glad that night dude got what's coming to him. Otherwise, I watched the first three episodes of Andor on my shiny new Blu-ray. Hell yeah. Enjoy that. Yeah. Yes. The that fucking dude definitely got what was coming to him. There is some justice in, uh, in voice actor radio. I do believe we are still being very much teased. And I do think that this is a subtext show. Uh, I don't think these girls are going to kiss at the end uh, is what I'm saying. But uh, at the very least, it is uh, it is living up to the part of making a big emotional th uh, uh, statement pays off, which is nice. Um, Ghost Valve says caught up on Dungeon Meshy. Whew, right. I'm not going to I'm not going to no spoilers for Dungeon Meshy, but like, damn, damn. Uh, I'm not all the way caught up on that, but I have some friends that are way into it and they were talking about it and they were like, should we, and I was like, you can just say whatever. And so they said, whatever. And I was like, Oh fuck. Um, yes. John, John's on episode 10. No spoilers. 
Elton John. Unfortunately, I did spoil by saying, oh, fuck. I'm not saying about what episode. Um, uh, finish some Magic Commander deck tinkering. We'll try it out on Monday. Hell yeah. Good luck with your deck tinkering. Uh, navigating real life things involving in-laws, which was expected, but unfortunate. Ghost Val. First off, hi. I don't think I've said hello to you tonight. Um, my, my condolences on hard times. Hard times come. Expected hard times are still not like you can have uh, expectations uh, and you can be prepared. And that does not make them any less real. Uh, just because something is not out of the blue does not make it difficult. It does not make it suddenly easy. Uh, so you have uh, my condolences for rough times. Uh, hard times are hard. And so, yeah. Uh, but thank you for being here. And I hope that this stream was at least was soothing. I don't know. Chill. Fun. And, and educational. <laughs> it's edutainment. Um, Lil Crashton asked about my check and then said, I've been playing more Fallout 4. And it's nice to have the frame rate and load times be much better on console. But I wish they added some accessibility options to the game alongside that stuff. I feel like Starfield won't get any accessibility options since they seem to be focused on other updates and DLC instead. Yes, you would have hoped that Starfield would have done it. I can understand why they wouldn't go back and do it. Um, my suggestion for people always is those games you, you want to play on PC because the mod scene will do the support that you're looking for. Unfortunately, uh, it modders should not be relied on to add quality of life improvements and accessibility and all of that um that should not fall on them it should be on the developers i'm not surprised that they didn't put that stuff in fallout but yeah um i always recommend those games so like you know nexus using vortex with nexus mods has never been easier I haven't played Fallout 4 since the upgrades came in. Of course, I'm a PC player, but I, I again, I haven't played it. Um, I certainly will at some point. Half I will, I will be have to get in on that, but I have not yet. I'm gonna pop these in here. Uh, we haven't built the uh, the weapons that go on the sides of them. Uh, which yeah, this is supposed to be right. Yeah, this is supposed to go like this. So maybe I didn't put these together right. We'll find out because this is supposed to, this is supposed to go in. Well, I'll clean this up. Yeah, this would go in. This will go in like this because there is the weapons go on the back of it, and then there's the shield part goes in the on the top. Circle shield. Okay, so that went in no problem. So one of these went in fine. What about the other one? Did I put this in on backwards? No, I didn't. Great. Oh, and then this uh, knee piece just keeps popping off, which is annoying. I might have to uh, use some liquid cement on that, like I did for the chest piece or the head, the neck piece. All right, now we've got our uh, now we've got our shoulders on. We do have some extra weapons. We'll do a little bit of that. I'm not in a rush on a Saturday night. Often on a Saturday, here, friends, I am on a rush because. Uh, at 11 p.m. is when the West Coast version of AEW Collision starts airing, and I want to watch that with some friends, uh, and so I usually do that after the stream, but the Collision is not on tonight due to uh, basketball, so, uh, and for the AEW watchers in the crowd, Dynamite next week will be after Collision, and it's, Collision will be at its normal time, and uh, uh, Rampage will be on after, it won't be on on Friday, but after that, uh, it will go back to its regular normal times. So next week is the last week of shenanigans for that. And then it'll be back to uh, normal times. Which is cool. It was kind of fun to have Rampage directly after, um, uh, after Dynamite, but I'm, I'm, I think I prefer it going back to where it should be. Uh, and I have been tempted to watch Ring of Honor. I do not have Ring of Honor right now. Uh, a Ring of Honor watch Ring of Honor. I do not have Honor Club. But I am tempted to get into Honor Club uh, for the specific reason of 
uh, Daddy Magic and Angelo Parker. Uh, so Matt Menard, Angelo Parker, Cool Hand Ange, uh, as a tag team, are wrestling again on Ring of Honor. Uh, they should just be on regular S A W, but I can say that for a lot of people, but they certainly should be. Uh, but it's been a while since they've been a tag team. Daddy Magic has been helping out Daniel Garcia for a bit. Angela Parker was in his love story with uh, Ruby Riot, uh, Ruby Soho, not Ruby Riot, Ruby Soho, which turned out to be a real shoot love story. Uh, the story on screen is actually real. They are a real couple. She is for real pregnant in real life. Uh, and so they kind of just wrapped up that story because they're like, oh, uh, yeah, uh, she told him she's pregnant and they're kissed and it's going to be great. And they're, he's going to be a dad. But well, that's true. They're, they're a real couple and an on-screen couple. And it's lovely. Congratulations to uh, Angelo Parker of 2.0 uh, and, uh, and Ruby Soho, formerly Ruby Riot, formerly Heidi Loveless. Fantastic wrestler that I've known uh, as a wrestler for many years now. Uh, so this kit is done for the day. Uh, we're going to wrap up the stream here. We are body complete on this. We have to finish the weapons and we have to finish the armor. It's going to take most of next stream. I'm just going to say for Monday that we're finishing this kit. I won't mention the model kit, the, the Lego set that we're working on next, but I can show you the Lego set uh, here, which is the Lego City. Uh, oh, sorry. I, I, I changed it there. There we go. Uh, it's the Lego City spaceship and asteroid discovery and apparently to um uh in honor of an anniversary of some of this uh lego stuff uh they're doing a lot of space themes in their other lines because it's a lego city so i'm like why is there a spacecraft in lego city it's because of the anniversary that's why they have this cool old school space logo on there apparently that is what i've been informed because I was confused about that shit. But that's the next thing I'm building. That was bought off my wish list. The video of me talking about that goes up tomorrow. Uh, but right now, we're going to wrap things up. I want to thank everybody for joining me tonight here on the old Build with Bear workshop. I hope you had a great time. This is a very chill evening. Uh, and I was happy to have you here for it. Um, we are going to raid. That is how we end every stream around here. We always end with a raid. We're going to find someone doing cool shit out there. Uh, and on a Saturday and we're going to go spend some time with them doing that cool shit. Um, who, let's see. Uh, Ooh, I would love to rate this person if they uh, have not been streaming for hours and hours. They have been streaming for nine hours. I don't know how long they're going. So I don't know if we should rate them because they've been going for nine hours and that's a lot of hours. Um, should we raid somebody else? No, you know what? Fuck it. They've been going for nine hours. I have no idea how much longer they're going to go. But Liz uh, streams sometimes quite a bit. And here's the other thing. If Liz is getting close to wrapping up, Liz raids awesome people. So we're going to have a good time with wherever she goes. Um, Unjohn says we always end with a raid because Unjohn is correct. We always end with a raid. We're going to go raid uh, Liz. Please come along. Liz is great. Uh, uh, she's currently playing a uh, an NES RPG with some friends. And that is fun. Uh, thank you all so much for being here. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Hey, I hope your weekend fucking whips ass. Come back on Monday as I finish up this fucking very cool model kit and then get ready to do work on a Lego set. Hope you have a great rest of your night. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, 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 goodbye.